Tonight I'm going to talk about, for those of you who are members, hopefully you heard our price reduction. So we're going to talk about that mostly. For those that aren't members, sorry it's kind of a member type talk, but maybe as a non-member you'd appreciate it too, hopefully. And answer questions about it, because there's quite a few questions that we've been getting this week. Um, so hopefully everybody will be good and have their questions answered with our new price changes. Um, so tonight, why are U.S. healthcare costs on the rise? And why are they going down at Veritas? My, my 11-year-old daughter asked me on the way in today, I was bringing her into cheerleading camp, and she said, what's your talk about tonight, Dad? The gut? <laughs> And I, or sugar, and I said, no, we're going to talk about why it costs so much for U.S. health care and why, it very, why we're lowering our prices. And she looked at me at this weird look on her face, and she said, well, why does it cost so much um, at other doctor's offices? I said, well, they kind of just treat the symptoms and don't fix it. And she said, but y'all fix it, right? I said, well, we don't, but the patients do. We teach them. And then she paused for a minute and she said, well, then y'all should cost a lot more. You're fixing people and they're not. You should, they should pay you more. <laughs> that's, you might need to be my marketing girl. <laughs> but I mean, that's logical. If you're fixing something and there's a lot of value in that, why wouldn't you pay a lot for that? But the, I understand also where we've been with U.S. healthcare and our mindset is general People in the public, you know, our employers are going to pay for insurance and insurance co-pays are cheap. And anyways, that's a whole nother lecture. But I thought that was cute um, that she thought we should be the most expensive. But um, really, it makes sense that if you fix something, you don't have ongoing cost. If you fix your dryer or let's say your carburetor, if you got a gunked up carburetor and your fuel efficiency is not very good, you're going to be paying more for gas because you have poor gas mileage and you're going to be paying the repairman a lot to continue to work on it or you just fix it. You don't have to just manage it. So managing versus fixing, we've talked about that a lot. Um, and really that's the problem. As you all well know, U.S. health care, U.S. medical education teaches us to manage disease instead of help patients learn how to fix it. So why are, things, why are costs going up? There it is right there. Time Magazine, this is way back in like 20 or 2004 or something. Um, heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, those are the big high dollar diseases. Inflammation, it's all inflammation. And I've got, a, I pulled a bunch of articles just to drive that point home. This is from the journal Atherosclerosis talking about how inflammation and coronary artery disease are linked. Here's one from the journal Stroke. I mean, isn't it sad we have journals named stroke and named atherosclerosis. That just hit me a while ago. And diabetes, I mean, there's journal article, journals, name this. Should just all be named inflammation. Here's one, inflammation and angiogenesis of can in cancer. So inflammation and cancer, it's well known. This, these are all very well known. These are mostly old articles. We've known this for a while now. Here's one on inflammation and Alzheimer's dementia. Here's one on, from the journal Kidney. <laughs> Chronic kidney disease and inflammation. Here's one on inflammation and depression. Most of these brain symptoms, it's all just inflammation of the brain. The brain's on fire. Uh, inflama Chronic inflammation and macular degeneration. Um, Preterm birth. I'm telling you, I usually tell the audience to just go home tonight and just Google your disease, migraines, Crohn's, MS, whatever your disease is or your symptoms are, and the word inflammation and see what pops up. And as you see, what pops up is there's a whole lot of journal articles all about, it doesn't matter what, what you have. Um, as, as I wrote up here, here's all the diseases up in black. But really, you can just put one big word across all that, inflammation. It's all the same thing. It's just showing up in different parts of the body. And that's why I read an article the other day about patients with cataracts are, I forget how many, 
uh, it was like 10 times greater risk of heart attack. You will have a heart attack if you had a cat. It's so predictive. The article basically said cataracts are just basically the first signs of heart attack. <laughs> it's like the very first, you think chest pain is your heart attack? No, really it's the cataract. And because there's such an association between the same thing that causes the cataract is what causes the heart attack. And it's what causes everything else too, including preterm birth. I had to throw this in here. It wasn't about inflammation, but indirectly it was. This Sunday on CBS Sunday morning, just this past Sunday, um, one of their pieces was about maternal mortality. And basically it started out um, saying America is the deadliest place uh, for women to deliver babies. We were like number 46th of all the countries. Welcome, guys. Um, I mean, Kazakhstan and Saudi Arabia were ahead of the U.S., according to these guys. And we assume, because we're a wealthy nation, we're um, kind of a world leader, the world power, that we'd have the healthiest statistics, and we don't. And when you're number 46, two women die every day giving birth. These are young women. These aren't... I mean, it, it's a big problem. So not only the preterm which I didn't mention on this article, the inflammation in preterm birth, but more of our babies die than any other industrialized country, six per 1,000 in birth. And someone wrote in and said, well, that's because we um, will birth babies down to like 24 weeks. If a baby's coming early at 24, 25, 26 weeks, we'll, let them, we'll still try to save them, and a lot of those babies will die. So that skews the st these statistics. Well, even when you take those out, we're still four and a half out of four and a half babies out of a thousand, which still has us in just about last place. So whether it's heart disease, cancer, Crohn's, MS, babies, maternal, um, we're just we're the worst. This one I pulled on Parkinson's, inflammation and in Parkinson's. But what I highlighted there, an increasing number of genetic studies suggest that the, the pathogenesis, that means root cause, of Parkinson's disease and cancer share common genes, pathways, and mechanisms. Basically what they're telling you is what I just told you about cataracts and heart attacks, Parkinson's and cancer. It's all coming from the same pathway, and here's the pathway right here. That's why I drew this. All these diseases, we call them different things, but it's all the same stuff. So, you've seen this slide before if you follow us or have watched my videos. The number one killer is cardiovascular disease. Studies consistently show diet and lifestyle are the cause of cardiovascular disease. Not cholesterol, not eggs, not butter, saturated fat. Go back to the first Tuesday night talk from November and watch that if you're concerned about your cholesterol. I've shown you all this slide before. Five to 10% of all cancers can be attributed to genes. So folks, ladies, some ladies are out there getting prophylactic mastectomies because they have the BRCA gene. Well, what these studies show is keep the gene turned off and you don't have to worry about it. And what turns it on? This standard American diet and lifestyle. That's what it says here. 90 to 95 percent of all cancers are rooted in environment and lifestyle. Thus my nice drawing here. <laughs> this is the root cause. We call them different things and they manifest in different parts of the body. And it's inflammation, but inflammation comes from oxidative stress, but that's coming from diet and lifestyle. And that seems way too simple. And it kind of is. <laughs> but it's the truth. And that's what all the studies are showing and have been showing for a number of years now. But it's not what doctors are being taught yet in medical school, at least most medical schools. So y'all have seen this too. I love this analogy of my wife's tire that had the slow leak and I was too busy to fix it. So I managed it. I went and filled it up every five days at the gas station with some air. And it was fine because she could get to the store and get, take the kids where they needed to go and get her stuff done during the week. But by Friday, it was pretty darn low again. I'd go fill it up again. And I did that for like six weeks in a row. And it's okay in the short term. We feel better in the short term. It got fixed. I can get through my week. Um, but long term, the life of that tire is going, life expectancy of that tire is going down. 
and there's increased risk for rollover, blowout and rollover, and it, it messed up her alignment and her shocks and struts. It put more stress on the other three tires. If you're going to choose to manage something, there's going to be unintended consequences of that long term. And that's why we are the <laughs> sickest country in the world, industrialized country in the world. We die the youngest. We have the lowest life expectancy, although we spend the most money and go to the doctor the most. Now, the guy at the filling station selling me the air was real happy. Or option three, fix it. I've talked about that ad, ad nauseum. So this is why U.S. health care dollars are going up. Inflammation. And here's where doctors treat inflammation. Try to treat inflammation right here. That's where the drugs work. They try to block the inflammatory chemicals. And it works temporarily for a few days or weeks or months. But long term, it doesn't. Obviously, you're not filling up. You're not fixing the hole in the tire. If you don't fix down here, you're still, if this is off, then this is still happening. Oxidative stress, free radicals. If that's still happening, you're still going to get inflammation and it's going to work its way around that drug. And that's why we don't get well. Um, I don't know how that slide got in there. That's not part of my presentation tonight. Technology. All right, there we go. So this really smart guy, when he said the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but he'll interest his patients in the care of the human frame and diet and the cause, cause of disease. And I'm not saying there's never a time for medication. I prescribed some steroids today to a lady with MS. When you're really inflamed and this MS is really flared up, getting on some medication for some temporary relief, filling up my wife's tire was the right thing to do in the moment right then because I couldn't fix it. But continuing to fill it up chronically, that's a bad answer. Here's a guy that founded John Hopkins Medical School. He's known as the father of medicine, modern medicine, Sir William Osler. And he said one of the first duties of the physician is to teach the masses not to take medications. Well, why would that be? Is he a mean doctor? <laughs> no, because he knew this. He knew the root cause down here, and a medicine's only going to mask it, and long term, you're not going to get better, and you're going to end up dying younger and suffering more and spending a whole lot of money doing it, and it's exactly what we see. That's what the U.S. healthcare system has done. So insurance works if, like in this room, however many, you know, say 12 people. So if 10 of y'all were really healthy, two of y'all were sick, but everybody was paying into the pot, into insurance, you know, 200 bucks a month. Well, 10 of y'all don't ever use it because you're healthy, but two of y'all use it because you're sick. It works. There's enough money to take care of the two sick people. But obviously, if that flips, if 10 of y'all are sick and only two of y'all are well, you're all paying in, but 10 of y'all are taken out all the time, then it doesn't work. That's what's happened. 50% of kids today in America have a chronic disease. Kids. Chronic adult disease. And so there just aren't enough healthy people now after three or four generations of practicing pharmaceutical-based medicine and ignoring diet and lifestyle. That's where we're at. So it's pretty simple, actually. It's... It's not rocket science. When you have sick people and you're not going to fix them and more and more get sick at younger and younger ages, it's going to cost a lot of money. So insurance companies are not going to lose money. They're companies that need to make money for the shareholders. So if this whole thing starts to get out of balance, too many sick people, not enough well people paying in, then you're going to have to pay more. Your co-pays will go up. Your deductibles will go up. Or they'll start not covering certain things. We'll give you two physical therapy appointments, not 10. We'll, no, we're not going to pay for that MRI. We'll pay for this instead. So you cut services. You put more of the cost onto the um, person. And so that's where we're at today. So that's why costs are going up. Now, here's why Veritas is able to cut prices as of September 1st. We're going from 85 a month to 65 a month. 
And I have doctors call from around the country asking me, how in the world do you keep your doors open at $85 a month with free access for all income as many times as they want, basically? And I said, well, it's because they get well. And then they don't come, but they keep paying you. In, in ancient Chinese, not too ancient, but China, they used to pay the doctors in China for every day you were well. You would pay the doctor a little bit. The day you got sick, you quit paying the doctor. So the doctor was incentivized to keep you well and teach you how to keep yourself well and stay out of his office. So same type of thing. Get well, but keep paying us um, because you value who we are and what we give you and the access to the information and the truth. And when you do need us, we're here and that kind of thing. And here's what happened. So this is more to the members who've been around for a while and on Facebook Live. At 85 a month, um, it doesn't work if people don't get well and they keep coming a lot. And we had enough of those who didn't quite get enough of this done and they needed our services too much. The ones who did get it done and got healthy, some of them stayed, but some of them, some of them said, I'm well, doc, thank you very much, love you, I'm out of here, I don't need to pay you anymore because I'm well. Um, so there was just enough shift of that where it's not working financially. So I'm lowering the prices to 65 to incentivize the well people to stay. Incentivize health. Now, for those who have to come four times a year, five times a year, six times a year, because you're sick and you need to, it's going to cost more. Someone wrote in a, a question this week and said, it's false advertising. You said prices are going down, but for me, they're going up. And yes, if you have to go to the doctor four times a year, you're a sick person. And it, we can't do four or five or six times a year at 85 a month, all access. We financially just doesn't work. So when you're sick, you will have to pay a little more, but the goal is to get you to three, every five months, six, you know, space you out, get you to just come in once a year. But even if you come twice a year, it's still cheaper than we were. And at three times a year, it's about the same price. But you get to four, five, six times a year, you're going to pay a little more. But it's because you're sick and we have to charge you for our time. That's why I told one of the nurse pracs today who's very, very sweet and kind and loving and has a hard time being confrontational. And I said, you just lovingly tell the patient you're a highly trained professional who's worth more than the plumber. <laughs> Plumbers get paid more than we do at times. But um, so we're not going to be bashful about having to charge for people that are sick. That's just the way it is. And I know we've been a great value for a long time. I feel like we still are, especially as you get well. We're a super great value. $780 a year if you're well. That's pretty darn cheap. I mentioned on my video that hopefully the members saw. I had a patient from Houston the other day, saw the integrative doctor from Houston, paid $5,000. The integrative doctor in Austin, $4,000. There was another one in Dallas, $1,500 per visit, every visit. And believe me, I've, I've looked at all these other clinics and their business models and their pricing. And I mean, there may be someone more affordable than us, but I haven't found them. And our goal is to deliver health care in the most affordable way possible. We want to be able to impact as many lives as possible. Dr. Mark Hyman, Cleveland Clinic, Institute of Functional Medicine, said, I mean, he's the top functional medicine guy in the country, and he said, yes. I can only see rich people. It costs, I think, $5,000 to see him too. And he said, because it takes me two to three hours to see that person. And then I spend another three or four hours going over their labs and thinking about their case and consulting others. And I see the sickest of the sick. And it's true. It's worth it. But, and so he said, so for everyone else, I wrote a book. For 20 bucks, go read the book. And so I totally get it, and I'm not bashing him or anyone that charges $5,000. It's worth it, like my daughter said. I, driving in this morning. Dad, why don't you, why are you the cheapest? Uh, and the other doctors, it should be flipped. Um, but so our heart is we want to not just see the folks who have the disposable income. We want to be able to see as many as possible. And so that's why we do what we do. And um, we're always going to make decisions based off your benefit, not ours. Ewat and Sauna, about 1% of the, of the patients were using them and it cost me a lot of money, and at our new clinic, it's gonna cost a lot of square footage, and it's gonna cost a lot of money to continue that. 
to benefit 1% of the patients. But Angie Romans and Nicole Powell sitting there in the back, Veritas um, Wellness Navigators, that's what y'all really need. Yeah, saunas are great, but we got you a great deal with Therisage and it costs 600 bucks or so to get a sauna in your house. You don't have to come up here. It's a better move for you, for me to invest in these ladies that you can call anytime you need. You can text them anytime you need. You can FaceTime. They are there for you to do this right here, to work on these things. This is what you need. I mean, Ewat's fine. And saunas are great. Like I said, get the Therisage, do it three times a week at home. These wait lists were, I don't know how long our waiting list was, and they're broken half the time, and it's inconvenient, and it just wasn't benefiting enough people. So I made that decision. And Ewat, in my opinion, it's awesome. I still endorse it, love it. Um, but I would probably use it more targetedly in someone who has a very acute illness, um, and they need to really saturate their body with oxygen very, very aggressively. Um, and like I said, a small percentage of the patients utilizing it, it's a much more beneficial to get 100% of the patients utilizing it. So I'm going to put our resources, your money, I'm going to try to steward your money in a way that benefits the most people the most. So we invested in Nicole and Angie, and we're going to continue to invest in the things that we know will help you the most to change your diet and lifestyle that's at the root cause of all this stuff. So, um, the wellness navigators are uh, free, no charge, access them as much as you need to. If you don't know about Veritas Life private Facebook page, get on it, members, because it's for you. That's where um, your fellow members are at, and that's where Angie and Nicole are at, and that's where you can answer all these kind of, or ask all these different questions. What's the best deodorant? What's the best... I don't know, uh, dental floss. <laughs> What's the most non-toxic way to clean my kid's bathroom? Um, how do you make chocolate cake but not spike your insulin because insulin drives inflammation? How do you fast? You know, they're going to be doing a group fast on that Facebook page in a, not this week but next week. Yeah, the 20th. Yeah. Um, so we're really, really pushing the community and the wellness navigators because that's what's going to fix you. Now, for those of you who are sick, of course, we have lots of other things we can do to try to, and even including medications. Like I said, I called some in today. So I'm not anti that temporarily. And when you're really in a bind and you're really inflamed, we need to do that. Um, but let me just remind you here. Um, poor diet, what's that mean? Grains and sugar cause that. And that's what Americans eat. They eat grains and sugars all day long. Fats that are man-made, adulterated, pro-inflammatory, omega-6 rich, vegetable oils, margarine, Crisco, those fats drive inflammation. Go look on any packaged food and it's going to be canola, soy, corn, um, cotton seed. And it's going to have something that ends in OSE, that's sugar, high fructose you're putting pro-inflammatory, you're putting gas on the fire. That's why Americans are sick, because of the diet. The second reason the diet is so bad, modern farming techniques, we till the land, we spray it, and we kill all the microbes in the soil. Microbes in the soil is what liberates the minerals out of the rock, the sand, the caliche, and get the minerals into a water-soluble form. The roots can take up, put it into the spinach leaf, you eat it, you get the minerals. Our soil is 80% depleted of copper, and copper is the number one mineral to, for your mitochondria. Remember the energy factory in your cell, the mitochondria. Fuel from what you eat. Oxygen from what you breathe. Spark plug. But copper in here and magnesium in there is what allows you to make energy. If your cell can't make energy, it won't work right. So if that's a nerve cell, it doesn't work right. If it's an eyeball cell, a heart cell, a hamstring cell, whatever cell, an immune system cell, it doesn't work right. You've got to have energy coming out of your cell. Copper and magnesium are the two minerals you need for it. And the American diet doesn't have it. I've shown you all those slides before. Huge 80% depletion of minerals in our diet. Stress we've talked about, ad nauseum also. Um, fight or flight mode. Kick up your, paras your sympathetic nervous system into fight or flight, stress all the time kills magnesium levels. You just urinate out all your magnesium when you're under stress. 
And it's not just psychological stress or your boss yelled at you or financial stress. Even just having that poor of a diet internally, that's a stressor on us. So stress, you deplete magnesium. Half your stomach acid um, production goes down when you're in sympathetic mode. And if you don't have stomach acid, you can't break the food down. You can't absorb minerals. You can't absorb B12 without stomach acid. You can't absorb the magnesium without stomach acid. It will even tell you that on the Nexium bottle if you flip it over. Risk, hypomagnesemia. You're going to have low magnesium. You're going to have low minerals across the board. Stress is killer. You can eat right all day long. You can eat perfect organic food all day long. And if you're stressed out the wazoo, it ain't going to work. So that's the issue. Oxidative stress happens when this cell doesn't have copper and mag. And when there's too much iron, not enough mag and copper, it causes that. Free radicals. Free radicals are produced mostly by excessive iron in the body. They added food, or excuse me, added iron to the food since 1940, iron fortified grain. They thought we were anemic. What they didn't know back then is the iron was in there. It just wasn't in the blood. It was in the tissues. Iron stuck in your tissues, not in the blood, drives oxidative stress. And we've been adding the iron to the food and high iron is ubiquitous in our society. And when you've got iron in this mitochondria reacting with oxygen, because you don't have enough copper and mag. Oxygen comes into that cell, it's supposed to dump onto copper, then copper runs it down the electron transport chain and you make energy. If you don't have enough copper, that oxygen's getting dumped in and if there's excess iron in there, it is the Fenton reaction. Go Google that tonight. The Fenton reaction is huge, huge oxidative stressor in the body. And that is the underpinning of inflammation. And there are studies that show this. Iron is the mineral, excess unbound iron, that triggers the inflammatory cascade in the body. And if you're not going to address any of that, then all you can do is treat symptoms. And there you go. You're filling up your tire with air. And there's lots of unintended consequences, and it's going to cost a lot of money. So reverse your diabetes or manage your diabetes. And if you reverse it, then your blood sugar's normal and you reduce your risk for stroke and heart attack and cancer. And you don't have to take medicine every day and you don't go to the doctor every three months to get refills. Therefore, costs go down. I've talked about before, I think with y'all, the worst diabetic I ever saw. 500 units of insulin this guy was on. I've never seen that. And I saw some sick diabetics down in Houston during med school. And the most I ever saw down there was maybe 200 units. And in six months, he's off all his insulin all his diabetes pills and his sugar's normal. And I interviewed him on the radio, go back, Dan Cressman's his name, it's, it's on the, our website on the archived radio shows and hear his story. Now his healthcare costs have gone way, way down. If he had not decided to fix his diabetes and said just manage it, his costs would be ex extremely high. One ER visit. It's cost 760 bucks to be a member of Veritas for a year. That can even get you in the door in an, in an emergency room or urgent care. So be in that system and manage your disease and continue to spend a lot of money and get sick or get out of it. Now I do want to mention health savings accounts and health shares. I mention these as often as I can because they're so beneficial. And we take health savings account debit cards. So go to your HR person tomorrow and ask them, can you please look in our plan in Blue Cross Blue Shield or whatever you're on and see if they have an HSA um, option and please let me do that. And please put a couple hundred bucks a month in for me and I will be your most inexpensive and healthiest employee you've ever seen. Because you will be. If you come here and deal with root causes, you'll be the most affordable, cheapest employee they've ever had, and you'll be on the job more, and your performance will be higher. I mean, everything will be better. We've seen it. We have the data to show employers this. So go to your HR and tell them that. Um, if you're self-employed or you have the ability to opt out, if your employer's taking, I don't know, 300 bucks a month out of your paycheck for health insurance, tell them, no, thank you, let me opt out, please, and go to Liberty Health Share or one of the other health shares and sign up for probably, I don't know, with an individual, I think it's around 100 
bucks, 150 bucks for health share. My Blue Cross Blue Shield for my family is going to be 900 bucks for the family on Liberty. It's 450, I think, and our deductible is 1500. It's called an unshared amount, not a deductible on a health share. Our deductible at Blue Cross Blue Shield was 6,000. So look at the health shares for sure. They will pay for your medical treatments. They paid for my son's broken arm. They paid for my wife's delivery of her baby, of our baby. Um, they'll pay like insurance, but they just pay cash, so they can negotiate a lot cheaper prices with your doctor. You don't even have to come to Veritas. But if you do come to Veritas, Liberty will pay $40 of that $65. And they will pay for those follow-up visits if you are having to come six or seven or eight times. You can submit those for reimbursement. So there is a way to do this health care thing extremely affordable, way more affordable than health insurance, and fix your problem. Be healthy. So you can go be who God made you to be instead of being so brain fogged or fatigued or at your doctor so much or so worried about this or that illness. You don't need to worry about all that. Um, Angie, were there any questions on the life page? Not for you yet. Okay, good. Well, like I said, today wasn't really a medical talk. I mean, it kind of did a little bit, but mainly I wanted to give another opportunity for members to ask me directly or tell me any of their concerns or ask me any questions. Um, I know it's always hard to spend more money and if you're sick, you will have to spend a little more money. But, or not, because if you're sick, really what you need is those two ladies right back there. I tell people that every day in my office. You don't need me. You need Angie and Nicole. You need diet and lifestyle help. Acute, the question is if you come in for an acute care sick visit, like flu, strep, bladder infection, whatever, stitches, we do stitches, guys, we do, we cut out skin cancers, but acute type visits um, are $35. I, I, don't quote me, or Angie, do you have the list up on a strep test? Is it like five bucks, I think? I'm almost positive our strep test is five bucks. That's a, that's a normal chronic disease follow-up, an hour-long visit with the PRAC to go over all your stuff when you're still in uh, sick mode trying to get well. Yes. But when you do the math at 150 bucks for a follow-up, 65 bucks a month times 12 months, that's 780. Add 150 to that, it, you get an annual visit included. Your annual checkup, that's part of it. That's part of the, that's free. So if you have to come a second time, so say in six months you got to come back, that's 150 bucks. But even at 65 a month for 12 months, to plus 150 bucks for the one follow-up at six months, you're at 930. Where in the old system you're at 1020 for the year. If you have to come every four months, then it's, you're up to 1080 for the year. Almost the same, 10, 1020 in the old system, 1080 in this system. If you have to come four times in a year, you're up to 1230. So that's the sick people. They're coming every three months. They're sick. They need to come every three months. That they'll be, I think that's 200 bucks more and on an annual basis than what they are now. So yeah, there's a little bit of increase if you're sick or if you're coming in often. If you're sick with flu, you just come in, pay your 35 and be done. I think doc in the box kind of clinics around town, you know, go in if you're sick. I, don't quote me. We called a few to sort of see what the market was because we want to be under market for our members for sure. 60, 70 bucks, strep tests were 30 something at the cheapest we found. Ours are five. Like our blood tests, a CBC and a thyroid, it's like six bucks. Um, here, there's another lab across town that charges cash. Everything's 49.99 just about. TSH, thyroid test, 49.99, six bucks at our clinic. So when you really start to add up, just your annual blood test over across town at a cash lab is 1,200 bucks. It's 150 bucks at our lab. 
So you paid for your membership right there if you're having to pay cash for laps. If your insurance covers your laps, great. Go to your insurance lab and get it done. Supplement, same thing. There's a mark up there, so we're going to cut out that middleman as much as we can. You'll probably save two or three hundred bucks a year on supplements, buying them through us, than if you go to Amazon. So when you looked at the totality of what you're spending on healthcare, membership, acute visits, strep tests, blood, annual blood work, supplements, because the diet is, I mean, our food doesn't have it. Even I try to eat great, but I'm, I'm taking four supplements a day because I'm deficient. I can't get enough copper and mag in my diet. So we're all going to probably spend a hundred bucks a month on supplements. And I think on Amazon it'd be 125 or 30 bucks. So trying to get all y'all to see the totality of it is, is one of the goals too. And again, a health savings account covers all that. You can get your employer to get you a health savings account and then put money into it for you. Pay for your supplements, your labs, and your visit. But really, honestly, we probably just need to get in the mindset of we need to budget in our budget, we need a budget for healthcare. We're used to our employer doing it and that's just going away. And so it's time to budget for healthy food and some supplements and healthcare if you wanna be well. Otherwise you'll pay for it down the road with nursing home visits and lots of doctor visits and co-pays and tons of medications. And I mean, some of these co-pays on these meds are outrageous. Um, and you get on five, six, seven meds. So pay now or pay later. Pay a little bit now or pay a lot later. Do we take patients with type 1 diabetes? Yes, we do. I just saw one today, actually. I made her a little bet. If she could get her A1C to 8, I'd buy her a Dexcon. But don't... I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> that was just a one-time deal. <laughs> it is so cool when you see these young kids, though. They have their Dexcon meter. That checks your... It um, inserts under your skin, and it monitors your blood sugar moment by moment. And then it talks to your Apple Watch, and you can watch it on your Apple Watch. And when you're going up a little, you just hit a button to give your insulin pump a little more insulin. And these kids can just be perfect on their sugars. And it's cool because it's all this technology and their watch. And I mean, these kids can get well. It's amazing. But yes, we see type 1s. And really, that's going to be the answer to every disease. Do we see Crohn's? Do we see lupus? Do we see whatever? And I've got a lecture somewhere on the website the name of the lecture is, or the presentation was, a clinic that doesn't treat disease. And the point of that lecture is, all these diseases, yeah, we treat them, but not really. We're, what we're treating is this. We're treating the root cause. We're going to treat your diet and lifestyle, your mineral imbalance, excess iron, and then whatever disease you've been labeled with, wherever this inflammation is manifesting in you, um, should improve, go into remission, go away, get way better. So we're going to focus on this, not so much your type 1 diabetes or whatever disease you've been given. Um, the same person that asked about type 1 diabetes wants to know if they would still need an endocrinologist to prescribe their insulin. Do you still need an endocrinologist to prescribe your insulin? No, we can prescribe insulin. But we're happy to either, we can be a nutritional consultant for you and keep your current doctor, or either way, we can be your PCP. Do you see kids that help with learning disabilities, that need help with learning disabilities? We see lots of kids with learning disabilities because learning disabilities, I don't think I wrote ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, but that's all inflammation of the brain also. And so in those kids though, you gotta heal their gut. The, Inflammation is really coming from the gut. There's a gut-brain connection. Dr. McBride in London wrote a book called Gut and Psychology Syndrome. I highly recommend it for whoever wrote in there. Read Dr. McBride's stuff and you'll start to understand the connection between the gut and the brain. And the inflammation here causes inflammation here. And we label it ADD or whatever. So yes, we will see those kids. Yes, ma'am. I have a large employer who is past open enrollment time, so I'm kind of stuck for this year because I'm sure I can't go to HR and say, would you please, because they don't care. Um, <clears throat> well, you'd be surprised, some of these big employers, because they're spending so much money. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> so, 
someday when they're about to go bankrupt too, they'll look at this. And that's what's going to drive this healthcare reform is businesses who are going bankrupt and they get onto this stuff and there's some that already have. That'll turn this thing around. But since I am on Blue Cross, will, could the exams and such be filed with that insurance and be reimbursed? Yeah. We can give you um, basically a receipt or a list of services rendered and your diagnosis codes and all that. And you can submit the insurance form that normally doctor's offices, their staff will submit. You can do that. Whether they'll pay you back or not. Network rates and stuff. Yeah, I can't say. Every company and plan is so different. For a couple, we dropped it to 120. And, and 150 for family, kids 0 to 18. If they're younger than 18, or 18 and under. Or Doogie Hauser. It just got too complicated. So many variables there and different ages of college dependents and stuff. All right, any other questions? Okay. I'm happy to uh, answer medical questions too if y'all have any. And next month we'll pick some medical topic and dive into it, hopefully. Actually, I might not be in town. <laughs> I'm not supposed to answer that <laughs> until we're actually walking out the door. Um, it's probably going to be at least a couple more months before we move to the new facility was a question. I'm trying to pay an expedited fee to speed up the process. But contractors do as best they can, but y'all know how that goes. Yes. But we're re really excited about that. Angie is juicing for the staff. She does juicing every day and smoothies, healthy ketogenic type smoothies. And once we get over there, we'll have a demonstration kitchen. She'll be able to do that for y'all too. And even for the out-of-towners, we'll have Facebook Live set up and video set up, and we'll be util utilizing that kitchen a lot more. Where is this new location? Downtown on Texas Avenue. 1316 Texas Avenue. It's got a pretty little courtyard just inside the wall. A live oak tree, a red oak tree, a sage, a waterfall, water feature thing, and just a peaceful, you, you kind of think you're not in downtown Lubbock when you walk in pass that wall into that courtyard. Yes, ma'am. Have you ever thought about opening a Midland office? I have thought about Midland office. Midland's poor and medical care. Yeah. I've been asked that a number of times. At one point, probably 50% of our practice was Midland folks or close to it, it seemed like, for a while. Um, and there's a possibility there, but I don't even want to barely even say that because then people will be calling but we just opened Abilene um, this year San Angelo last year and I know Midland would be a great um, spot it's got to be the right person at the right time um, but yes we've thought about it yeah once we, I feel like once we get this model really nailed down here in Lubbock, um, and I think we're real close to that, we'll be able to really, I have doctors call all the time asking how do they do this, and always the biggest leap is not actually the medical conversion. We can kind of get that to them. It's the business side. How do you make the jump there, and how do you not get a big dip in income for a doctor who's used to making this? and. You know, eventually you can get there, but initially not. And just so many variables, it's hard. But I think we've about got it figured out. So I'm, I'm thinking 2019 probably be a good year for 
other clinics, other doctors to start, whether it's a franchise or just another branch or whatever. Because I know there's a huge need, and that's really the driving motivation. That's why I started hiring Nurse Prax. Six years ago, it was just me and a laptop, and that was it. And I wanted to stay small. I'd been super busy and down in Garza County doing conventional medicine, and my goal was to do a micro practice and just me, no employees, no website, no anything. But the need was so great, and I filled up so I could either close and just have my little few patients or start hiring nurse prax and training them, so that's what we decided to do. And now we've pretty much close to full with nurse prax. We could probably add one more. So it's gonna have to be another doctor and more clinics. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> Don't show love coming out to Lubbock? <laughs> well, there's Abilene now. It's closer to Arlington. And out-of-staters, we can see y'all. We do see some out-of-staters. You have to come once a year for a face-to-face, -face, but then everything else we can do is Skype, FaceTime. But state of Texas requires once a year visit. All right. Good. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Facebook Live. I'll be watching Facebook for an announcement on our next one because I don't know for sure about September and if we're moving in October. So, But we'll be back at some point to teach you some more stuff. So thank you all.